we're going to walk through a couple of things. I know we've talked a lot about the different things that we do in the background. And all of a sudden, you're going to be like, well, this doesn't show me most of that because it's all happening in the background. So we know we wanted to fundamentally talk about how are we going to migrate users to this kind of environment? How are we going to make it really easy? One of the nice things for us really becomes there's no device licensing or feature licensing or any of that kind of stuff. All of the inventory, whatever devices you want to operationalize, they're operationalized and brought into the service. If we are facilitating that, if there's a partner involved, we work with them to, to get that done because it's a service and you're not having to turn on any kind of license or anything of the sort on any kind of device or physical, virtual, whatever it is. Once it's inside the infrastructure, we now know, especially having done this multiple times, especially with the enterprise space, staging and staging workflows and making sure you can actually get things running, certify it without causing full outage events inside the network. So you're able to do a full staging workflow, set things up, test things out before you activate them. So in this particular model, I'm just going to straight up activate a device before we'll start configuring some things. All right, so we activate. And then from there, we're gonna go to the active devices. All right, so one of the things we really wanted to think about was we know there's a bunch of config that we deal with all the time. How much config can we get rid of? What is the stuff that we don't really want to have to deal with? This is where we're, uh, because of the fact that this is using the internet, using the cores, we can actually auto detect locations. We can identify what their addresses are, things of that nature, and auto determine which location they should connect into. But this whole com comes back to, I wanna be able to control which core I want to access. So if I wanted to change the location it homes into, I can actually do that. So this is where, how much can we dynamically pre-provision, but also make sure if you wanted to change things, you're easily able to. We're gonna go into routing protocols once I get there. Now, again, because this is provided as a service, a lot of people don't really want to have to do a whole bunch of AS numbers and router IDs and things of that nature. We can auto assign them as well as part of the service. But enterprise being enterprise, everyone has their ASNs, everyone wants to set local AS and AS prepends and everything else. You have full control over being able to do whatever changes you want for the multitudes of segments and slices inside your network. There was one media company a couple years back that we were working with who had, what, 300 VRFs? And they were doing a bunch of things across those. They had they'd been hacked once, and so since then they sliced the whole network into micro segments. Um, Just pronounce VRF. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> uh, so here, from a configuration standpoint, constantly being able to check in, have version control, have the equivalent of git diffs on configs, but without having massive amounts of XML to read through, unless you actually enjoy reading it. Um, so JSON, XML, YAML, pick your language of flavor, and you're able to do that. Now, this is not the best map, I will confess. But this is meant to highlight to the user what connections are they using to access the different networks. And right now, their primary path is going into a particular core node from the different circuits that they're leveraging. Okay, now I'm moving really quickly. Here, from a routing standpoint, I know this gets very detailed, but for us, it was, again, an enterprise solution should give you that control. So route filters, being able to look at any element of information within the routing protocol. The biggest challenge, though, that we saw when we moved to cloud-based portals and management and stuff was 
we are all very, very used to show IP BGP and a whole bunch of show commands. But that also is directly executed on the device. How do you stream that kind of data, especially if I have thousands of prefixes and I don't want to have to run into slow moving queries or query timeouts and stuff. So we had to really think about, can we move route navigation to a search based model? And I know it's a bit of a shift, right? We're so used to show IP BGP and then I'll do pipe grep for whatever else I want to do. Um, but how do we do it in a distributed system that's querying multiple databases, multiple systems, and having to fetch or stream data directly from device and multitudes of devices. So there's a lot more search oriented approach, but giving control around what prefixes, what address families, um, best path selection, next hop resolution, in terms of AS path mapping, being able to identify the entirety of the path and, and being able to, right now, not in this section, but be able to influence as it transits through the networks. Now, routing and networking is all great. What does the application space look like? And can we provide that kind of visibility and allow you control and see in all transparency, are we meeting the SLAs that we committed to you? Because we're talking all about this QoS specification stuff. Can I actually get that and see that you're providing the SLA that you promised? Am I getting the quality of experience for the applications? What is the measurement? Am I exceeding the bandwidth that it was supposed to be at that location? What is the loss latency profile for that particular application? All of these things are you know, part of the service, end-to-end, so -end, edge-to-core, core-to-core, core-to-edge, edge-to-internet, edge-to-private connectivity, being able to give you for that particular application profile, what are the different metrics and where everything is going. If something goes wrong, how much can we see and where can we see it and what can we do? So here in terms of, from a service standpoint, this is on us. Like ideally, if this happens, we should be the ones notifying you, hey, something's gone wrong, we're on it. You're gonna see it in the dashboard that there's a bunch of impairment affecting your application because it's part of the service. And you're seeing what's causing the trigger. So, you know, bandwidth's shooting up, the loss levels are going up, the latency levels are going up. And we're seeing that on our connectivity path in this example, AT&T is the source point where we're seeing that connection is you know, affected. And you can push these out to either application APIs or message buses? Exactly, exactly. So uh, we're, a, we're a big Kafka shop as well. Um, we use a bunch of different distributed databases because again, monolithic architecture is never a good idea. So here, how it kind of functionality, you know, a lot of our network operators, when we did a field trial, they were all like speed test, troubleshooting, packet capture. I want every single tool I ever can use. I want that. And so we were like, okay, can we put in all the speed test options for you? We're not going to run it automatically. You can choose when you want to run it. If you want packet capture functionality, yes, it'll be there within compliance bounds because we can't see everything, but you can run the capture. Um, in terms of probing and telemetry, all of those things are part of the service as well. What we'll do is probably have you know, more in-depth discussions and we can, we can do some of these things as well. And we'll publish a lot more demos on our websites and stuff. But the idea has always been, can we make the internet programmable? And can we give the network engineers and operators better tooling so that they are not at the mercy of whatever is happening in the internet.